Welcome to the Monthly GPS. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. If you want to know what's going on in the global economy, you have to look into it in depth. You can't just skim over the headlines. You need to understand the truth. Today, we will be talking about what the rich invest in and what they have done for hundreds and even thousands of years. The next thing I want to talk about is the old school strategies that some have been partaking in that simply are tradition that will probably go on for a very long time. The third is borrowing against assets. How does this work? What does this mean? I will get into all of that and more. Here we have this, basically this article is written specifically about the oligarchs and the fact that they have been buying assets in Manhattan, to Dubai, and all over the world. Okay, they go through and they basically try to identify exactly where all of that is. It is directly connected with this Russian asset tracker. And the only reason I show you this is because this gives us a very you know, let's say infographic style look at what some rich people are doing, okay? It has nothing to do with what's happening right now. I'm simply just highlighting it because it's it's really good graphically, okay? So you can take any one of these, uh, perhaps some of these you have heard of before, okay? This guy right here is worth about $5 billion. And you can see, if you go through his assets, you will see the mansion on the Adriatic coast, all right, Montenegro. You look here, London, he's got a house, he's got a super yacht, they all do. And then you look at Sardinia in Italy, a villa, three villas in fact. I noticed that happens to be a theme, by the way. Uh, Sardinia happens to be the place to be. Another yacht here, you can see going through villas, residential apartment blocks, a helicopter, because why not? On houses, office towers, and you go through, okay? And I'm not going to go over this over and over and over again. You can see it for yourself. Um, I will have all the links in the description if you want to check it out. But you will see certain things. Number one, there's going to be things that are clearly for investment purposes. When we see what's... On the, okay, and then I should also say there are toys. Okay, there's the yachts and, and the boats and the you know, planes like this. And then there's some gray area in between. But I think it's important to see where that person currently is. Because in a sense, perhaps this person is from Russia and maybe lives in Russia at least part of the time. They want to move their assets out of their country. But you see this a lot with not just Russia, but many countries, that they have assets in that country in which they reside but they also want geographical diversification. Geographical diversification is very important. So always keep that in mind. This is one of the assets that, as part of what I just showed you, what many rich people like to get their hands on, and it's real estate. So real estate is one of those that you know, it breaks down into many different levels. So we can have the single family home. Okay. We can have, um, you know, commercial property, retail properties, and they can range in quality, all of those things. But then we have the multi-family real estate. It's essentially like, a, like an apartment. And this works very differently than, let's say, a single family home. I don't think a lot of people understand this. The value of this particular investment is not necessarily determined by what a single family home sold for down the street. Okay, it doesn't factor in. It's not as if, okay, that single family home sold for $1 million, let's say, and there's 100 units inside of this property. Well, we multiply that and we get an approximate number. It's not like that. The value is determined by what the rent is. So if you can increase the rent on that particular property, you literally increase the value of that asset. It's, it's, it works very different, okay? And so these big buyers are going in and buying these multifamily properties. And then what they do is they go out 
and they sell it as a real estate investment trust. They go out there with the black stones and the black rocks and they create a product that then they could have small time investors investing in. It works a little different than what you would think of you know, traditionally. Okay? But keep that in mind because you've got these billionaire type people that are able to get in and buy these things for millionaire type people. But it's generally not something that the average person gets into. Then we have this. Record-setting Leonardo da Vinci work was displayed on Saudi leader's yacht. So I'm connecting these things in together. Number one, the yacht. You've got people that are super rich, super wealthy. They've got the yacht. And in this case here, apparently, this Leonardo da Vinci work, Salvador Mundi, uh, being on the yacht. So I think what's also happening here is getting this, I mean, I don't know the inside story here, but what I'm trying to say is that these assets are able to be moved around. The money, the wealth is able to be carried around, around the world, but at the same time, they're able to, let's say, um, keep their assets where they need to be at that given moment. Okay, let's, let's, let's say that. If you want to see paper assets and what's been happening with different investors, different CEOs, different businesses in terms of paper assets, okay, stocks, go to Open Insider. I have an entire video breaking this all down and different ways to do it in my playlists. Okay, if you go to my e-course uh, playlist on the YouTube channel, scroll down, playlist there, there's an entire video about this. But you can see, just as an example right now, as I record this, we just had Elon Musk selling off big chunks of Tesla stock to finance the Twitter deal. So that is just one example right here. So they may be selling off from some of their stocks at a given moment, or they might do something else. And I'm going to cover all of that, okay? Now, we need to talk about one asset class, that is art, and what some investors have been doing. Let's face it, things aren't looking so great right now in the markets because 81% of the country is freaking out about a recession. A head economist at Harvard thinks it's already here. The leading recession indicator, the Treasury's inverted yield curve, has signaled it's on. But let's take a step back. Why? We can't go back in time to buy Bitcoin or some other asset at the bottom, but we can see what has fundamental and historical advantages and strengths. I told you about them last month, and a lot of you guys signed up. I'm talking about the alternative investing platform called Masterworks. Masterworks lets you diversify your portfolio with fine art for just a fraction of what the billionaires pay to purchase. And after I told you about them, you guys really went above and beyond. Seriously, Masterworks sent me the stats. We've invested over $20,000 on their platform in paintings like Banksy, Basquiat, and Picasso. So I explained last time Masterworks unlocked access to an ultra-exclusive asset class that 73% of millionaires and billionaires know is invaluable to have in their portfolios because they know that contemporary art outpaced the S&P 500 total return for the last 25 years by a whopping 164%. Not only that, but since launching in 2019, Masterworks has sold three paintings, with each returning over 30% net IRR to their investors. Now, legally, I have to add that past performance is no guarantee of future results, but 30 plus percent is what the most legendary investors like Druckenmiller and Valio had achieved. That's why they've already been valued at over $1 billion. And you can get in early and skip the waiting list just by clicking on the special link in the description. Looking at the old school strategies, these are the things that are kind of those never fail. And I know a lot of you love what is real, something physical. And gold is obviously one of those. So you can see there are many different traditions that go way, way back. Las Aras, the ancient Roman custom, includes the act of breaking gold, or silver equally in two pieces. This signifies the promise to marry by two individuals. That's right, going all the way back 2,000 years ago. Part of ceremonies. Cultures today do this right now. Many cultures. Okay, you could see the custom of giving wedding coins originated in Spain, 13 gold coins 
and so on. It goes here. You could look at these. I have found another one in Sweden having their own version of the tradition. What does this mean? Okay, you've got something that will probably go on for a long period of time. Gold coins. They don't give, you know, whatever, anything else. They're giving gold. They're giving real, something real. Now, are they necessarily looking at the price? Well, it's not. I want to give $1,900 worth. I want to give $1,600. No, it's a gold coin. It gets passed down through the families. This is the way it works, okay? Bill Gates is the biggest private owner of farmland in the United States. Interesting. But the point here is that farmland is... I mean, that is extremely valuable in, on its own. But understand, looking at the conditions we are facing today that I cover on my channel all the time, I believe it's going to be even more important in the coming days. Something that's very, let's say, uh, unconventional is this. You've got companies today that their entire existence is going out and buying e-commerce companies. They look for different brands that are selling on Amazon and they buy them up. It's unbelievable. Just a few years ago, it didn't even exist. Now there are this color company is uh, Seller X. Seller X is just one of these aggregators, and they buy them all up, and they're getting something real. A business is real. It sells physical products. What are the ways that you know? People are doing things differently today. And what are the ways that, let's say, we are watching, you know, these different billionaires and all of these uh, other people that seem to be aware of knowledge that the vast majority isn't. And one of these is essentially, well, let me, the overarching theme here is borrowing against assets. This is talking about a cash out refinance. When you have a cash out refinance, Long, I mean, this is the explanation here, but basically you take out equity from the property to use potentially on another asset. Okay, you can then you could take the, that money out and you could, let's say, you know, if you had two hundred thousand dollars in this property, you take a hundred thousand dollars. Now you buy another property with that. Now you have two properties, and the rent renters are paying down the mortgages. This right here is interactive brokers. Okay, they're, I believe, the biggest uh, when we talk about stocks. Imagine you could take your portfolio of stocks. You don't have to sell your stocks, and you could borrow against that. By the way, obviously, any of these things are very risky. Okay, I'm not saying that you should do that. I'm just highlighting what these very wealthy people are doing and you know the way that they are doing it, essentially. So it's, it's being done with these different assets. And this happens to be uh, interactive brokers. They give a much better um, rate than a lot of the other businesses. In the US, if you have a million bucks, you can essentially be paying 1.08% to borrow against your assets. So if you were holding onto a stock, you are, you know, Jeff Bezos, you could be borrowing against your stock at basically 1%. Now that's a lot cheaper than going to get a loan from the bank and all these different things. So I'm just highlighting that. You see how these people with that knowledge, they could be doing something that the majority can't. And then we have this, the world's first crypto mortgage only at Milo. No wait list here. You could choose your loan. You can close your loan today or give pre-approval letter to make an offer. What is a crypto mortgage? We reimagined how mortgages should be done considering your crypto wealth. Instead of selling the crypto, you could borrow against it. So this, I believe, has never been done before. This is this is huge that you could borrow against that crypto. Now, what happens when that crypto value goes down? What happens when your stock starts to plummet? Well, then we get into problems. This is the risk. This is a big risk. Okay? So I just want to highlight that. Don't think that any asset isn't the risk. But what do we have? We have inflation, big, big inflation today, which means you're being, imagine like there's a fire underneath all of your cash. So if you, you have money, there's a fire underneath that's burning. And so we need to take that money out and we need to deploy it in different places, whatever you think is best. 
real assets, the things that are tangible, generally do very well in times of inflation. Okay, we need to be aware of this. If you're looking at paper assets, which you might not consider to be real assets, it's those companies, if you're already in there, maybe you got a 401k retirement account, so on, it's those companies that have real stuff. It's not, uh, uh, yeah, 20 years from now, we're going to have this real great dream of doing this and that. Those companies, look at what's happening in the markets today. Not doing so well. So watch out for this. I hope I made myself clear. If you appreciate this information, hit that thumbs up button and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.